First, take some time, pause the video, and answer your guess at a question, at the question. Okay, now that you're done, let's get to it. Now, some of you might have said, during that second second, the ball is going to move one foot. No! Good news, you got a lot of insight to, to gain from doing this problem. Others might have said it might move two feet because the ball's accelerating. Ah, oh, that's good. You might have some good intuition, but you still got to learn to put pen to paper sometimes. Okay, so let's get started. When I solve a problem, first thing I like to do is draw a picture. It doesn't have to be pretty. There's my hill. There's my ball. And after one second, I'm going to draw the ball again. And then at two seconds, I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to kind of draw a little ghosty ball. Ghosty ball right there. Okay. I'm also going to start labeling these things. So, so at T0, I'm going to say that that's zero seconds. And at T1, I'm going to use the subscript to denote how many seconds it is. So just to explicitly write it out, that's one second. And then T2, of course, means two seconds. Oops, two seconds. Okay, and now I also need to choose a coordinate system here. Well, the ball starts from rest. What if I just call that x equals zero? And then I'll have increasing x along here. I can choose x however I want to. And you'll gain intuition about good choices uh, the more problems you do. Okay, now I'm going to assume a model. What is a model? Well, in the context of physics, it's something like a picture in your mind, but it's also a formalism. Basically, it's a series of assumptions that we're making to simplify the problem. So here, the assumption, the model, is that the acceleration, the ball is going to accelerate, and it's constant. Now, why do I think that? I don't. It's just a guess. I mean, I've done this kind of problem a few times, so I can draw on all that experience. But in the end, you assume something with a model. You try it out, you get an answer, and then you kind of check it various ways. And if it's wrong, fine. Model's wrong, so you start with another one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is start listing values at these different times. So, at T0, my position starts off at zero feet. It starts off from rest, so my initial velocity is also zero. Uh, my acceleration, I could say a sub zero, but by saying acceleration is constant, I'm basically saying that the acceleration at all these different times is just the same. I'll call it a for now. I don't know what it is. Question mark. Now at t1, I'm given that the ball has moved one foot. I don't know what the velocity is yet. And the acceleration is going to be the same. T2, I don't know anything. Story of my life. Okay, so how do I solve the problem? Well, people get caught up when they think about average velocity and things like that. So average velocity would be something you don't want to use in this case. What I would do is fall back on the kinematic equation. So assumption, acceleration is constant. That's a model that means you can utilize a sequence of equations to solve this. I'm going to switch to blue because I like blue. Okay, so the kinematic equation means that after one second, my position is going to give, be given by my initial position plus my initial velocity times time plus my constant acceleration times that time squared, that elapsed time, from where t1 is the total time since t equals zero. So in this case, after one second, I've chosen my coordinate system so it starts off at zero. It starts off from rest, so that's zero. So it's just one half a t1 squared. Now if I look back at my list, I know what t1 is. It's one second and t2 is two seconds. If I'm lost, what I start doing is I start looking around. Which of these do I know? Which do I not know? Well, I don't know A, but I know the other guys, so I could solve for A. 2x1 divided by t1 squared. It's moved one foot. 
and T1 is just one second later, and I get two feet per second squared. The units work out, that's a unit of acceleration, great. Okay, so now what? Now I want to figure out what is my position at two seconds. So it's going to be my initial position, which again is zero. My initial velocity, which again is zero. It's going to cancel out. I'm just writing it out again. And T2 is two seconds later. So this part's zero because the initial velocity is zero. That's zero. So one half times two feet per second squared. T2 is now two seconds. And there I go. Looks like it's at four feet down the ramp. Now that's not what the problem asks. It asks, what is the displacement during that second second? So its position is now at four feet. Its displacement is x2 minus x1 delta x two to one is equal to x2 minus x1. That's four feet minus one foot, three feet. Now I check my answer, make sure it's got the right units. Yep. Uh, it's the right order of magnitude. It's not like 10 kilometers. It's I'm not saying that it's 2.9999013. It's got the right amount of significant digits, so this looks about right. Done.